Hey guys, Ryan King here, and uh, just like yesterday, I started uh, doing these little Facebook videos, about five minutes long, talking about various topics um, as it relates to uh, music and worship in the church. And so yesterday, we briefly talked about uh, how to choose songs for your church, uh, and we talked just a little bit about that. We'll come back to that. Uh, to that at kind of at a later time because that's a that's a big topic that we can really spend a lot of time on and uh, I don't want to uh, uh, camp out there too long for right now and so um, you can feel free to go to my Facebook profile or my fan page and you can um, see that video you can also go to my YouTube page as well and uh, find out uh, what we talked about there just as far as how to choose um, songs for your church uh, today I want to talk about something that I've seen a lot of and it's called um, it's the topic of uh, charts, sheet music, and uh, music stands on stage. And I see comments a lot and people asking questions about should you use uh, music stands on stage, should you use charts, should you memorize, should you not. And um, this is a big topic I think that uh, we can kind of camp out on for a little bit. Um, and I think ultimately it all comes back down to something that I said yesterday, which is um, it's not about you. It's about your congregation. It's about your people and helping them to engage in worship. Um, and so whatever it takes to help them engage, then that's what you need to do. And so whether it's picking the right songs, picking newer songs, older songs, arranging them kind of to your culture or whatever it might be, you need to do it with them in mind. And so uh, as far as charts, sheet music, stands, all that kind of stuff, well, with um, stands on stage, that's all dependent upon if you're going to use charts and sheet music. And I think there's two, um, uh, two things to think about as it relates to that. Just for me personally, I don't like stands on stage um, uh, just because of just the contemporary worship scene, the way that we're trying to communicate, um, stands can sometimes be a hindrance, I think, uh, in, in many ways. And so if I were to take my iPad here and just put it in front of you and just continue to talk like this, um, this would probably get pretty old after a while. Um, you see, you know, me trying to communicate while you can't really see me or something in front of me. And the same thing is if, you know, if I'm holding it down here and all you see is just the top of my head, after a while that kind of gets old. And so I see this a lot with, uh, with churches where they've got stands and the musicians are just buried in the music stand. They're, they never look up, they never engage the congregation. Um, sometimes they don't even look like they're happy to be there. And so, um, that, I think a lot of times that can be a hindrance uh, in trying to just communicate um, to people. And so that's not to say that stands and charts are bad. And on the flip side of things, if you've ever been to um, a symphony concert, um, I've never walked away from a symphony concert and heard people say, oh, I didn't enjoy that because the musicians were looking at music. Um, you know, when you have... Uh, orchestral symphony concerts, they've got music stands, they've got sheet music, and they're performing, and they're performing beautiful music that can touch you and move you and create uh, a pretty amazing experience, but they're doing it with stands and sheet music. And so that's not to say that in our worship experiences that we can't have amazing worship experiences with musicians who are using stands and sheet music. I think it just all depends on the culture that you're trying to create. And in uh, kind of the symphonic side of things, uh, sheet music and, and music stands are part of that culture, mainly because the music they're playing is so um, intense, it's so, uh, it can be very long, pieces can be 30 minutes long. You know, the songs that we play are two to five minutes tops, unless you're playing a Hillsong tune, which can, you know, be up to 10 minutes long. But it's still the same progression over and over again. And so um, I think personally that uh, the music that we do is easy enough um, that we should be able to memorize it. Now, I know that there are churches that have people that come in that have been working all week long, they barely get time with their family, and so um, they they don't have enough time to sit down and 
you know, memorize the music. So they need a cheat sheet in front of them. They need uh, to be reminded of the chords. And so I understand that that's needed um, many times. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just think that with um, the kind of music that we do, um, that it's it's not too much to ask musicians to try to memorize these songs because we're only doing a handful of chords uh, and the the stuff isn't that difficult. Now again, uh, I think it all comes back down to your culture, your church, and your people. And at the end of the day, it's all about what do they need in order to uh, engage in a meaningful worship experience. And so um, if your church, uh, if, if, if you don't really ever hear anybody saying anything about, hey, I wish those musicians would uh, not look at their music or whatever, then you're probably pretty good. I will say that when I look up on stage and I see the lead guitar players and, uh, and the drummer and the other musicians not looking at music and are smiling and they're singing the music that... Uh, that you're doing, and they're engaged with the uh, the, the crowd. Uh, to me, that just says a ton, and it really uh, just speaks to me personally since I'm a musician. Um, I just love seeing that versus them just being buried uh, in the music and not engaged. I think in the contemporary worship scene, it's an engagement between the stage and um, the uh, and the congregation because for so long there's kind of been a wall in between. It's almost like the people on the stage are doing the worshiping for us, and that's not the case at all. We want the people to engage in worship and participate in worship, and in order to do that, we have to communicate in, a, in an effective manner, and a lot of times when we put music in front of us, it just kind of hinders that. And so um, I'd love to hear what you guys have to think about this. Again, this is just kind of tabling this, um, this conversation about whether to use it or not. Uh, I don't think there's a definitive answer. I think, again, it all comes back down to what I said yesterday. It's not about you. It's about your congregation. And if um, if your congregation is worshiping with your uh, worship team and they're using stands and charts and sheet music and that sort of thing, then continue to do that. I would still encourage you to challenge your musicians to try to memorize their music because that's, um, that's a skill that I think every musician needs. But, again, it all comes back down to your culture, your people, and just knowing your people. And so, again, uh, this has been uh, just talking about, if you're just kind of chiming in, this is uh, talking about charts, stands, sheet music on stage. Um, if you didn't get a chance to tune in here, you can always go back and uh, watch it after it uploads. Yesterday's deal was about how to choose songs for your church. We'll come back to that a little bit later and kind of expand on it um, just a little bit. But I would love to hear what you guys have to think about this. Um, you can always go to my Facebook page or my profile like that and stay up to date. If you're in need of training for your worship team, uh, you can always go check out worshipartistry.com. There we've got uh, full tutorials in uh, today's worship songs for bass, keys, drums, acoustic, electric guitars, uh, and uh, we're really expanding um, some new things there that's really exciting. So be sure to check that out. Go to my Facebook. Check out the things there. All right, you guys have a good day.